Right, let's go pick right. some poo. Looks like a smiley face. <laughs> That's really pungent. Oh, Surprisingly like tense. Oddly for Earth Unplugged, it's not the animal we're interested in. This meerkat is very lovely, but actually, we want to know all about its poo. Dan and I, from the National Poo Museum, want to collect their scat, and we found two lovely samples inside this termite mound here. Uh, they actually look really different, but they've come from the same animal. That's really a reflection, I think, of the fact that they eat a variety of food, and because they've got a fairly rapid digestive system, it's still fairly evident <laughs> when it comes out in their poos. How do we go about collecting them? The first step will be to freeze them so that they're nice and hard. We'll then take the little scoop and put it onto our poo hammock. I love that part of your job was developing a poo hammock. It enables us to lift it very carefully into our box like this. Looks like a smiley face. <laughs> poo hides many secrets. The Isle of Wight Zoo has no shortage of poo. For their director, Charlotte, scat is vital to check their animals' health and well-being. So you're monitoring your animal's poo and how regular it is, but what sort of things are you looking out for? The colour of the poo and making sure that it's consistent with what the animal's been fed. So for example, if you've just fed your lemurs a whole load of blueberries, the poo's going to be blue. You shouldn't be too scared <laughs> by that. But with the cats, for example, they have a more consistent diet, so you'd expect more consistent coloration. And if all of a sudden you had a very, very dark looking poo, that could tell us there's something wrong yeah. with infection going on. Do you think poo can be used in conservation? Absolutely. There are a lot of animals around the world. It's very difficult to research, but all animals poo. So they can obviously take um, poo samples, track you know, how mm. healthy populations of animals are, especially those that are critically endangered. So poo has all sorts of uses, but Dan has come up with a new way to change people's poo perceptions. The National Poo Museum is Dan's idea to turn poo from waste into art. Back at Dan's studio, I was going to try my hand at turning scat into an artefact. Wow, so this is the art studio of the Poo Museum. Bespoke contraptions designed to dry, mould and finish the exhibition's poo spheres are found throughout Dan's studio, which, unsurprisingly, does have a unique odour. That's really pungent. Our meerkat poo will take a day to dry completely, but of course Dan had some wallaby scat he prepared earlier for us to work with. So it's ready for resin. Over to you. So now it's time to place the poo inside. I want it to look as natural and as real as possible. Oh, Surprisingly like tense. I want the wallaby sphere to be a, a fan favourite. Bye, poos. Just say goodbye to a poo. The wallaby sphere will take a day to harden, so while that happens, here's another that Dan prepared earlier. I am in the privileged position of uh, being allowed to polish the poo into its final stages. You must have learned so much about scat. It's been a real journey of discovery for us and to, to find out that it's just such a vast subject. Poo, knowing what to look for, what to see in it, is just such a useful tool. But if you can make people laugh and engage them that way, then even better. They were wrong. You can polish a turd. Hopefully mine will take its place alongside the other specimens within the museum. Every poo has its own story to tell and what's particularly fascinating about this one is that it shows the interaction of animals and, and human worlds and some of the effects that we're having on the, on the natural environment. So you can see here all this white, that's actually not the uric acid that you normally see on bird poo. This is just plastic from a plastic bag that the bird has eaten. I never would have guessed that these little white parts were plastic. I just would have assumed they were bits of excrement. 20 years ago, only one in 10 seabirds had remains of plastic um, found in their guts. But now that, that has risen in, in 20 years to 90%. So it's quite shocking, really. 
Wow, so Pooh really is more than just Pooh, encapsulated in this perfect little sphere. We have a whole story about the way humans interact with animals and plastic pollution. So there you go, who knew you could learn so much from a poo. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you subscribe for more videos just like this. Leave us a comment and we'll see you soon on Earth Unplugged.